A couple of months ago, I was on here talking about how little I was looking forward to WrestleMania 35. It, I just wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't coming together for me. The WWE wasn't doing much to help me either. But things have changed. And over the last couple of months, as is somewhat natural because it is ultimately still WrestleMania, no matter how disenfranchised I feel by the current state of the WWE product, there's still something about it. It's still the show. It's still that big deal. So naturally, even if you think you're not going to be excited, there's still an anticipation there. There's still an excitement. But then as this show has started to come together over the past couple of months, I have found myself becoming more and more interested to the point where I am actually legitimately, no lie, super excited for WrestleMania on Sunday. Incredibly excited. I may not be the only one, I may be in the minority, and of course for me, I'm used to being in the minority, so what the hell is the difference now? But seriously, like I'm really pumped about WrestleMania. Like I look at some of the matches on the card, and it's like they speak to the very cackles of my heart. you got Shane McMahon versus The Miz, in a Falls Count Anywhere match. This is a match that's been building up for months. The guys are in the right positions, they're in the right spots. Miz is the babyface, which works with this dynamic, and Shane McMahon is the heel, and it absolutely works in this dynamic. Sure, you could have went with it being inverted and having Shane be the face and Miz be the heel, but it works so much better with a McMahon being the one that you want to hate, the McMahon being the one that you want to boo, the McMahon that you want to see get his ass whooped. And knowing that Shane is freaking ridiculous outside of the ridiculousness of his punches, not only is it a WrestleMania match where you know Shane is going to do something spectacular and stupid, it is also a Falls Count Anywhere match, so you know by God this is going to be a given. So you take two guys that can actually go out there and be characters. You take a guy like The Miz, who is that mid-card MVP of WWE through and through, Shane McMahon, this stunt devil, that'll sit there and do that big spectacular shit and make, it seems like, any big match work. You put him out there, biggest stage of the year, and you give him something to work with in a Falls Count Anywhere match. It feels like this match is absolutely destined to go over well. Like, I'm legitimately pumped. Characters I can get interested in. A story that I can relate to. A story that I am interested in. Oh my god. It works. It's so simple. You look at like AJ Styles versus Randy Orton and some of you are going to say, you're no fan of Orton. You've never been a fan of Orton. Part of the whole reason people even never came to know who the F you were. The reasons Randy Orton sucks. And that is absolutely true. But you were also talking about this match here that people have been talking about for literally a decade, if not more. There are so many dynamics of this that work on so many different levels. Like it would be almost impossible for AJ Styles and Randy Orton, even with Orton in his no fucks given mode, to go out there and lay a freaking egg at WrestleMania Sunday night. I've been waiting for this match for years, and we're fucking getting it. The stars aligned, it's come together. AJ Styles' character is in the right place. Randy Orton's character is in the right place. It's just one of those obvious, duh, 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 just fucking do it type of things. You've got Kurt Angle's retirement match, and I still hold out hope that it's not going to be Baron Corbin that faces him the last time unless Kurt Angle goes out there and squashes the shit out of him. If that happens, then that just elevates this show to a whole different level. Oh, brother, brother, oh, brother. But if that's not in the cards, you still have an alternative. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. But you want to talk about things coming full circle. It wouldn't come much more full circle than if you happen to have Baron Corbin be replaced by John Cena. I can't believe I'm 
saying that. that. That's the weird, twisted, fucked up place my wrestling mindset is right now. That I'm legitimately hoping that John Cena replaces somebody in a match. That's bad. But I know I'm not the only one. But for God's sakes, if it's not going down like that, then at least let it go down that Kurt Angle squashes Baron Corbin. Usually you want the guy in his last match to lose, give the honor. What the fuck has Baron Corbin done to deserve that honor? What the hell are you going to do with me? F that. F that. I mean, you just look at this card and there are so many possibilities and potential. Like even Rollins versus Lesnar. There's a hope to me. I'm not a huge Rollins guy, but somebody, anybody, to finally get that strap off of Lesnar. Yes, sign me up for that. And it's Rollins' time, it's Rollins' moment, and I'm supportive of it. You got Roman Reigns wrestling at WrestleMania where a few months ago you didn't even know if he was going to, and in this case it's going to be against Drew McIntyre? Hell, I can get down with that. I haven't seen much of Roman over the past several months. Drew McIntyre getting a somewhat featured match at WrestleMania? That's fine with me. You got the women freaking main event mania. They're going last. You got Ronnie, who's a big reason why this match is main event. You got the man bitch, who's done a lot to take what the W is trying to do to her, turn it on its head and make it work and become a main of WWE as a result. And then you got Charlotte Flair and everything. But when you look at this card, the most logical thing to have made of at this show, for, based off of the story and how it's been developing and where the company, it was women's championship match. And they are on the marquee. They are front and center. They are prime of prime time. Bringing it home on Sunday night at MetLife Stadium, WrestleMania 3. That's exciting. It is exciting. Like, and then, we haven't even gotten to the best stuff yet. Now, we all know, we all know, that I live for breakfast club business. I'm there every year, and I wait to see the man of everything that is the hunter, the host, and the helmsley. Every year. Some of you worship an invisible force that you can't even see. A family force on your TV. Or if you're blessed enough to be able to go live. Someone that makes me happen every year. He can make a marquee WrestleMania year out of nowhere. That, ladies and gentlemen, is quantified. That something that is tangible. That, for all of you that believers that are blessed. Femurs is once and for all proof of the magnificence of God. You take Ric Flair's 70th birthday bash, bring in people like Shawn Michaels, and you bring in people like Sting, and you have the entire roster stand out there on the ramp. Why? Not to celebrate Ric Flair, but to set up Triple H and Dave Batista at WrestleMania. This breakfast club business. This is magnificent. This is what the WWE is supposed to be about. This is what WWE should be. These two egomaniacs, they're by God, they're going to pose, they're going to sit there and take rest holes, they're going to sit there and suck the oxygen out of three rolls in that stadium out of it, and I can't wait. No holds barred, hell yeah, baby, like you can feel it, you can sense it. I got it right here, and that's not just clogged arteries, damn it. Is legitimate for all of you who are talking about. New Japan's got this in the next season. Do either one of them have Triple H versus Tista in this Breakfast Club bash? No bar. WrestleMania. No, they don't. WrestleMania has that thrown all in. We're talking about here. And we stipulation that if God loses, he has to retire from in mission. Like there's a whole other element of suspense here, people. I cannot emphasize this enough. In most other years, this demands a main event of WrestleMania. My God. Ugh. Okay. I wanted Batista back. He's back. 
waiting for God. His marquee WrestleMania match. And by that he got. Praise God. Oh, God. And that's not even the most exciting. I've been called many things over the years. A cop. Justice, justice warrior. Race trip. All the mother things. Much more. But by God, Sunday night. While it might not go, it might not be the main event. For me, Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan is my main event of WrestleMania 35. And that is factoring in versus Batista. That's how much Kofi Kingston versus Bryan means to me as a fan on Sunday night. WWE, bye. this might not have been the plan, and you know what fucking was it. You know initially you probably didn't want to go there, but when you did, I implore you, I, I plead with you, I throw myself at your mercy for all the guys like ADR and fucking Jinder Mahal want to be because of their ethnicity, having to sit there, me, and watch as the Memphis meat gun piece of crap found you. No ten thousand guitars didn't draw a goddamn dime, but yeah, we're gonna fucking try and riot with them. I had a sick fucking mid card piece founder of a company, and then another company as a vanity fucking project, so that way he can sell you some twenty four karat gold double J style. This is your chance to make right that abortion of a decision to put in last year. This is your chance to make it right for trying to that Memphis big car wrap down that throat fucking time. All those years of history. All those of bullers not getting that opportunity for the WWE Championship. It is here. It is now. Do what you want with it, WWE. One night, and I mean for one night. Just let the people have their moment. And you know how much this means to people? Ready to boo Dan? Let me repeat that. This means so much to so many fans that the guy a few years ago that they threatened to lose network subscriptions, burn down social media, blow the fucking internet, for the world! Global warming my ass! The rage of Daniel Bryan fans and their groins was fine. Any emissions pump into the fucking ozone. They want to boo Daniel Bryan so that way they can cheer for Kofi Kids to become the next WWE champion. Like, this goes beyond K Fade thing else. Like, there are elements of reality here. And when it feels, when it is real, that's when it's the best. And by, you know how many are going into Sunday night, like me, waiting for Vince McMahon to put the screws to the one more time. He loves to do. We're watching that whole match with bated breath and ambition, waiting for the moment to come, but also deep down, Fearful that they're going to do something else. No chance, WWE. Talk about making history. You got the women main inventing the damn show. We put the strap on the black man. Not Kofi Kingston to win the WWE Championship later, now, at WrestleMania. So that way, Kofi Mania can run wild all over you.